Hello, this is Burn, and you have a habit of giving guys more than you receive. I inevitably start being treated like an option, even though you treat them like a high priority. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how you can course correct this painful habit and instead start being treated with respect, with dignity, and with high percent. Hello, this is Burn. Welcome to another edition of BurnMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now. Yes, I'm talking to you, so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, if you're going through a painful situation where you're treating someone like a high priority, he's treating you like an option, he's not making time to date you, or call you, or maybe even text you, then I don't have to share how painful this is, you already know it, and that's probably why you're watching this. Now, I also don't have to share why it's needed for you to create a mind shift and also a change in behavior so you can start experiencing the benefit of having guys pursue you, invest time in you, treat you with dignity, treat you with respect. And that can only shift if you're willing to see things in a very specific way. So the first thing I want to say is that if you're experiencing being treated like an option, it may not be his fault. And here's what I mean before you throw a tomato at me. Sometimes, and that I'm talking about if you're in the early stages of dating, the entire concept of dating is figuring out who is your best option and if you might be his best option or not. So by definition, conscious dating in my book means evaluating more options and you being able to test the connection with more guys than just one. The problem becomes someone treating you like an option when A, you're in an exclusive relationship with him, where by definition you've closed off the doors, I'm talking about monogamous relationships here, when you've closed the doors to other men, or when you're dating and there's nothing that has been clearly established and you assume that you're somewhat exclusive, so start prioritizing your time and energy in a way that comes back and haunts you. So if you are in the early stages of dating, instead of waiting for the guy to treat you like his highest priority, you need to open your doors and create more connections because that's the only thing that will allow you to see the truth of how someone is showing up without putting some extra unnecessary pressure or neediness on a guy who may or may not be the best fit to be with you. So on today's video, I'm gonna divide it up in two different sections. The first section is gonna be what are the four fundamentals that make it so hard for incredible, intelligent, thoughtful, conscious women, despite all the great assets they have, including their intelligence, to actually get treated like a highest option in someone's life. The second part of this video would be, if you already find yourself in a situation where you're treating, being treated like an option and you're prioritizing a guy more than you need to, how you do the flip or the turnaround so that you can start experiencing the fulfillment and the connection that you want. Before I head into my first four steps as to what's preventing you from making the shift, I would like to invite you, if you want to learn to go beyond the concepts of this video, more than I can share in this first few minutes, and understand how you can create more options in men, how you can date consciously, how you can have a stronger strategy through which creating that level of passion that you're ultimately seeking with someone, that you go to the first link on the description of this video, and you will see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email, and you can start watching my free masterclass right away. The first reason why you might be finding this so hard to change is because you are probably investing in men based on your level of desire, your level of chemistry, and your level of emotional appeal to them instead of in how those guys are showing up in your life. Meaning, if you connect with a guy and you start creating this idea that he's a fantastic specimen of a male, and you then start coming up with ideas that your chemistry is strong with him and you actually feel it and he connects with you in a way that you feel so special, seen, validated, but he hasn't had enough time to prove to you that this is the right type of connection, that he can do it, that he wants what he shares he wants, or even to share with you what he's ultimately looking for a relationship, which may or may not be the same thing you're looking for. If you connect with a guy based on the way you feel about him and you invest in him based on that, then you're probably gonna get hurt because that is not the determining factor that should guide how you connect and engage and invest with a guy. The number one criteria for you investing in someone is not the level of chemistry, 
but how strongly, consistently, clearly, and passionately He is showing up in your life day in and day out. The second reason why many women, maybe you're in this group of women, find it so hard to not be treated like an option is because you create exclusivity with someone without having a strong foundation of solidity and friendship that lets you know that you're doing something that will guide you to the destination that you're after. So here's what happens. If the first step which I shared is you're starting investing in a guy based on the way you feel about him, not only that, but you become exclusive with him before you really know who he is and you project in your mind that because he called you three days in a row or maybe he connects with you in a very special way that maybe few other guys have connected with and you interpret that as he's the one, then you create exclusivity faster than you need to and then you realize very early or maybe midway through the exclusivity portion of things that he's slightly different than you thought or very different than you thought that his level of motivation his level of drive is waning is not as excited as he used to be he's not taking action as often as he used to and by this point you've closed off all the doors with other guys and you're too invested with him you probably had sex with him already you feel an emotional attachment to him that is not commensurate with the level of the depth that exists in the relationship so far. So at that stage, it's really hard to just move away. So if he's treating you with less intensity and less passion and less clarity and less pursuit, then you're kind of stuck into this no man's land where you want to be treated with more respect, more dignity and with more pursuit, but you're afraid to step away in case that this is the best thing that happens to you, in case that he's really the guy that you're meant to be with. Third reason why women find it hard to not be treated like options is because they develop a scarcity mindset. Listen, based on what you've been experiencing, based on your level of maybe luck or lack of luck, which is most likely the scenario on the dating apps, based on your knowledge or inability to create organic connections when you go out and about, or maybe your even unwillingness to go out into the real world to connect with men, puts you in a position where you start believing that the truth, the way you see it, is the absolute truth. So if in your ideas and your beliefs, connecting with high quality men is something that is really challenging, really scarce, and really once in a blue moon type of experience, then what happens is when somebody shows you a higher level of awesomeness or intensity than other men, you confuse that with this will only happen now and it may take years before it happens again. So you cling on to him as if this is the best thing that could ever happen to you, even though in reality, you might, if you develop different skills, if you go out more, if you learn how to consciously date online, instead of what most women do, which is just put themselves out there and hope for the best, you might be able to develop a stronger mindset of abundance where you're willing and able to walk away, converse, set a high standard when somebody starts showing in a way that is not dignified to the way that you expect him to show up. And the last reason, which is far more common than I'd love to share, and I'm saying this after having connected with thousands of women from so many different countries and cities around the world, is that, that you, your level of worthiness, your level of deep belief and knowing that you deserve to be loved, that you deserve to be praised, that you, should be, that you deserve to be treated as a high, high uh, price in this world, if it's not where it needs to be, then the world will show up to validate the subconscious beliefs you have about the way you feel you must be treated. And bear in mind that this has nothing to do with your intelligence. You might be able to write an essay that shares how awesome you are and why you should be treated with respect, but when push comes to shove, internally, you doubt it. So you're saying, burn, okay, so I get it, I understand. Now I'm in a situation where this guy is not treating me with respect or awesomeness. What do I do about that? Well, here's the situation. I'm going to give you two different frameworks. One framework is if this is something that's been happening to you, you're not really in a relationship right now, but you don't want, you want to make sure that this doesn't happen to you again, then the first two steps will apply to you. The last three steps will apply to anyone, whether you're connecting with someone right now, and after a while, he's not showing up with the level of awesomeness that you expect him to, or whether you've been with someone for a while, who shows up great at the beginning and then starts showing up. So if you're not in a relationship right now, if you're just starting to date people, then the first step that's gonna prevent you from doing this is to force yourself to remain unexclusive until you decide that you're both compatible. So what I mean by that is if you start connecting with guys and you find week number one, you connect with a guy who seems to be awesome 
and because he seems to be awesome you start connecting with him every day and you stop pay paying attention to other guys who at least on paper don't, don't seem as, ex as exciting as he does then you're even though you haven't had any agreement with him even though you haven't had the conversation you're becoming his girlfriend you're you're, you're lowering your uh, your your chances of connecting with somebody else and you're becoming exclusive with them before you get a chance to really know him so you want to establish a rule or a principle that says I need to connect with a guy for a few months, maybe three months, let's say, at a minimum, before I can objectively discern. And I'm not saying that's the, 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 the goal. It could take you longer to connect with him, but I, I wouldn't recommend taking less time because anyone can show up with, with adrenaline for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. And a little longer time will give you, uh, reduce the risk and allow you to see more of what's inside of his heart what's within his grasp, what's within his ability to show up, how he can prioritize you in the relationship. And then at the point where you've gotten a chance to know him, then you can decide that exclusivity, if he's interested in being exclusive with you, is a risk, but it's a much lower risk than if you do it early on. Step number two, just as you're forcing yourself to not become exclusive with him, I need you to force yourself to date other men in the context of dating him. Why? Because if you date other men, if you show up with openness and grace and passion, if you ask good questions, if you qualify these people, you might find that three weeks out, there's somebody else who at the beginning wasn't as exciting or high up on your list, but he's showing up in a way that treats you with more respect, that treats you with more praise, treats you with more value, while this other guy, week number two, is already starting to loosen his grip and his stance and his passion, and by week number three, he might be a losing contender, and if you have not dated other guys, then you would still be evaluating him with a subjective and not too powerful lens. Step number three, if you, let's say you catch yourself already in one of these dynamics where you might have already be exclusive with someone, but he's showing up less intensely than he needs to, you realize that you're giving a lot more than you're receiving, then you need to give him space. Stop initiating, take a step back, Use some of that time that you were doing, using to bend over backwards to his schedule, to hold the space open in your calendar in case that he's available the day because he's so busy and start filling up your calendar with things and activities that make you feel more connected to a level of intensity that will make it hard for you to fall for a shiny object that's not equivalent to the depth that you're experiencing, right? Because if you connect with someone who's creating the intensity in your life and you're not doing other things to fill that up, then it's gonna be really hard to let go of him because he becomes your oxygen. The moment you start leaning back, the moment you start relaxing, the moment you start saying, well, if he's too busy, I'm gonna create other things in my life, will not come from a needy place, will come from a place of, this is what I want, this is what I need, this is what I'm not willing to settle for. And then he's far more likely to say yes or to say no, but regardless of what he says, you know that he is not the determining factor in you experiencing the love that you want in your life. Step number four, when you've given him some space, he might show up differently or he might show up the same. You need to have a conversation with them where you clearly express without neediness, but also without BS, that the vision for the relationship that you're seeking to ultimately have and the steps that you think will create that, the level of connection, the level of frequency of seeing him, the activities, the planning, and then engage with an open heart without judging him where he's at, if he's interested in something similar, if he can't because he wants something different, or maybe he wants the same thing, but he's gonna be honest with you and sure that he's not in a place in his life at this point in his career, at this point in his X level of challenge to be able to give you what you want, in which case he might say one of two things, you know what, I recognize that I'm not showing up at my best, and I want to make an effort to do it. And then you step back and you gauge if that's the reality, if his words match his actions, or if he says that he's not ready or willing to do that, then you go to the next step, which is take your power back. So here's the combination of things that we can do. Okay. Combination number one is where he says, I want to show up more strongly and you're going to evaluate if he can. So you, you continue investing greatly in him. As he continues investing greatly in you, that's one combination. The other combination is where he says, I can't do this. So you step back and you stop being exclusive with them and you take a break or you end things for a while and you focus on creating the connection you have with yourself and opening up to connecting with more men. The thing that, that's not possible, things that are not a match is where he's saying, you know what? I can't show up strongly and I'm not sure what I really want uh, but you continue investing in him the same way. I know 
because I've experienced this so many times with clients that I serve, how challenging and fearful and anxiety producing this might be. The thought that you might have to leave him, the thought that you may not be able to be with him for the rest of your life, the thought that all the time you've invested in him might go to waste. But you're not considering the alternative, which is continuing to invest six months or a year or two years in the same way that you've been investing and continue to get the mission returns where your low self-esteem gets lower, when your ability to get what you want diminishes, where the fear that relationships don't work gets stronger. In other words, if you continue doing the same thing but are expecting a different result, that's by definition the way to become insane. So what you wanna do is take your power back without ultimatums of, of a bad kind, without blaming him, without getting upset and saying, here's what I need, here's what I'm willing to do for my life. So let's take a small break right now while you figure out what you want. If you ever want to reconnect with me in a way that is super strong, the way I'm investing in you, then by all means reach out. If I'm single, I might, if I, I might say yes. If I'm not single, then with all the pain in my heart, I'll say no. But I want to honor myself. I want to lock myself in action. And I want to show the world, the universe, through my actions, that I'm willing to wait to experience depth and intimacy until I have something and someone who's willing to risk at the same level of my risks. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, and you want to learn how you can attract that partner faster, then make sure to hit the first link in the description of this video. If you enjoy the video, click like or thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of new episodes, and share with me in a comment, what is your biggest takeaway from this video? What's the one action you're willing to take after watching these words. Last but not least, if you're still watching my video, you're listening to my voice, and you recognize that watching videos is not all that was, will get you where you want. You've been doing the law of attraction, you've been going to therapy, you've been doing so many different things, but still not getting the result that you want, and you want some hand-holding, some accountability, and some an infusion of energy so you can get what you want in a fraction of the time, then you might benefit from working with me. Second link in the description will allow you to apply to see if we're a great match to work together. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart and your home. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.